joy from hello to all of you. My name is Ming Pubuta, founder of the Circle of Joy that brings you self-mastery programs and retreats. It gives me great joy to bring to you this season's talk show, a series of interviews on choosing joy, secrets, and stories from all over the world. It is my diligent attempt to show you that joy is not a hockey pocky frivolous concept, but a discipline, a way of life much needed. If you want to be resilient, radiant, and unstoppable like a runaway train. So subscribe to my channel so that you can tap into the wisdom of people from all over the world. I will see you there. Hello, everyone, to all those beautiful souls in different parts of the world. Now, the promise of a hopeful future is, of course, motivation for the pursuit of our dreams, right? It fuels determination to overcome difficulties. And sometimes, sometimes all it takes is an inspirational talk like we will have today to reset your thoughts and remind yourself to be grateful even when you are feeling hopeless. Namaste. My name is Minku Bhutta, your host from India, and I'm delighted to welcome you all back to the 18th episode of this talk show. And if you want to catch the wisdom of my speakers on the 1st and 15th of each month, like, subscribe, and press that cute bell icon on my YouTube channel where I host these episodes. So simple. A little bit about my very special guest speaker today. He is a life mastery coach for addiction recovery, alcoholism, love, relationships, health, wellness, mindfulness, and meditation. He's also a best-selling author of Funky Wisdom, a practical guide to life. He runs his podcast. I have so much to learn from him. He runs the podcast Funky Brain, in which he's interviewed many celebrities. And we actually have so much in common, as he's about to find out. Just do it. Nike believes it. I do too, and so does my guest speaker. He believes we must be in the flow of giving and receiving, so do I. Please join me to welcome all the way from Colorado, United States, Dennis Berry. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Minka. That was a beautiful introduction. I'm very happy to be talking with you. I think you're a beautiful presence, and we're going to have a nice talk. Thank you. And I'm so glad, Dennis, we're doing this at last. Uh, I know that in between so much of your podcasting and your mastery sessions and the light, life that you all lead and the pace that we allow life to have, you found time to be with me today. Um, so, um, you know, I'm actually, let me start by saying I'm fascinated by your funky brain podcast and uh, your successful book, Funky Wisdom, also has the word funky. So that seemed like really fun when I saw that on your LinkedIn profile. So where is this funkiness coming from? Uh, it, tell us a little bit more, Dennis, a little bit on about yourself. Sure. Well, my background is uh, I've been sober and clean about uh, over 19 years now, since oh, wow. 2003. So, uh, you know, about that. And that's the reason I do what I do as a coach to help people uh, overcome addiction and alcoholism and really just radically change their lives. Mm -hmm. And the thing with alcohol or sobriety or addiction, whatever, it's not a not drinking contest or a not doing drugs contest. It's about growing up mm -hmm. and uh, looking the world in the eye, being an adult, taking care of your responsibilities and just uh, improving yourself regularly. Because when we improve and we grow, there's no space for harmful behaviors like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, my journey in growth and improvement didn't start until my 30s. And it can be painful in your 30s and 40s and beyond to uh, grow and to uh, try to uh, be an adult and do all of the things that you always wanted to do when you, when you were younger, but still don't know how. Right. So uh, my friends early on used to say all the time, oh, Dennis has funky brain again, because I used to talk and try. I was trying to figure life out. And I was uh. trying so hard to do it. And it was really difficult. And yeah. Um, that's where funky brain came from. I was going to call my book 
funky wisdom, but I like our funky brain, but I like the idea of wisdom as it implies growth and change. Yes. And so I call my podcast, the funky brain podcast. And my book is funky wisdom, a practical guide to life. That is awesome. Um, I related to this so much and it caught my eye as I was telling you earlier, I hosted almost a dozen episodes tennis and I call it the chunky funky anecdotes. I mean, how, how much more of a mouthful does it get? And uh, I had real fun. And I think life is meant to be lived joyfully. And, and, you know, these anecdotes that I, I had words like uh, chaff safety and I had defense trade on om. Obamu late <laughs> and 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 that that's really fun when you go out with curiosity like you beautifully put it and uh, curiosity drives you no matter what and who thinks what um, also um, Dennis going back to hope the hopeful and the hopeless uh, hope for me is like spring right it keeps mankind in motion and you talk about being able to help the hopeless become hopeful. Uh, so Dennis, I invite you to uh, today bring in your wisdom and your experience in two ways. First, I would like to ask you, um, why do you think that people even get stuck in this rut? Uh, why are they not able to take action and move from this hopeless to hopeful? Perhaps you want to shed some light on this. Sure, yeah. Wow, what a great question. You know, one of my favorite quotes is from Martin Luther King. He said, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And, wow. you know, sometimes where uh, life, uh, you know, takes us down these dark holes mm. and mm. we get stuck and yes. we feel uh, hopeless and right. the whole world's against us it's going to collapse and that's where a lot of depression comes from and sadness mm -hmm. and that's where that leads to the addictions of any sort mm -hmm. uh, or just any unhealthy coping mechanism right. and sometimes hope is all we have and that's okay you know if we can cling to hope mm -hmm. uh, there there's light at the end of the tunnel and uh the other problem that i find Mm -hmm. is that um, we're impatient people. Yes, so, yes. you know, when we're like, all right, well, I quit drinking and now I, my life's going to be perfect. Or I, mm -hmm. I started saving money. So now I'm going to, I should have a million dollars or I start, yeah. I started to exercise. Now I should be 50 kilos lighter, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it takes time. It's a hundred miles into the woods. It's a hundred miles back out and improvement in our yeah. lives takes time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't like to, to, we don't like to hear that hmm. uh, we're impatient by nature so patience as they say is a virtue and it's one of those uh attitudinal foundations from John Kabat-Zinn I love that you know patience yes. uh, allowing time to do its thing allowing the universe to unfold uh, exactly the way it's supposed to freely yeah. and uh, I love Deepak Chopra always talks about his law of least effort one of my favorites, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. we struggle so hard against everything. And, and it's not needed. <laughs> just struggling in the present moment, mm -hmm. uh, you're struggling against the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And it's nearly impossible to win a fight against the whole universe. But when we let go, all those things we're chasing after, that mm -hmm. peace, the money, the relationships, the whatever it is you're after, they just kind of follow you around. But it's not our instinct to let go it's our instinct to cling and so when i teach people uh whether it's in coaching or on shows or whatever it is it's a uh, it's about it's not so much about learning new ways of living it's about unlearning old behaviors yeah. and beliefs mm -hmm. and then at, over in the course of doing that you learn new ways of living but first we have to unlearn mm -hmm. and uh that could be a, a long, painful process that people don't want to go through. But from that pain and struggle comes the growth. But when we can finally learn to let go, That's the true. universe presents itself to us in ways that we never thought was possible. That's so true. You know, I actually, uh, when I was in the Himalayas, I just wanted to share this. Um, 
you know, with our audience and you, that uh, I actually was having a conversation with a very young monk and, you know, they have limited English. Uh, they speak in Hindi. So we were kind of doing a little of both. And, uh, and we were talking about unlearning. And he actually encapsulated that tennis so beautifully. And he says, imagine that, you know, you're holding a bowl uh, which has a little bit of murky water. And, you know, the Buddhists have this beautiful engraved uh, metal bowls. And imagine that there's some silver coins at the bottom of that bowl. And till you actually throw some water out and fill new water, which you beautifully said is like taking on learning and taking on new notions, changing mindsets, you will never know the bounty and the wealth that's sitting at the bottom of the bowl because it was dirty. You couldn't see the bottom. So, uh, so I think tennis, what you said is so beautiful that uh, actually, if you think tennis, don't you think that hopelessness nourishes human hope? What do you think? Hopelessness nourishes human hope. Yeah, uh, because uh, you could find, you would never ever find sense in life without experiencing its absurdity. Yes, it's yeah, you, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, I think uh, that... I think that that's another take on what I said before about like the pain and struggle leads yeah, to growth. Yeah. And so when we're in that helplessness and, and this is another reason why people fail in sobriety or recovery mm. uh, or, or not just sobriety and recovery, but mm. just in making massive changes in their lives mm. is because uh, we're up against limiting beliefs up against these walls and this hopelessness that you're talking about. Right. And we haven't seen the other side yet. So that's where faith comes in and hope mm -hmm. where we have to say, I don't know how to make a million dollars and I don't know if I can, and I've never made it before. So there has to be some faith and hope in the processes to get mm -hmm. us there. And then we have to change along the way. Uh, same thing with sobriety mm -hmm. uh, and addiction recovery is that, we stop drinking and uh, we don't replace those habits, uh, mm -hmm. those harmful habits with healthy habits. Mm -hmm. And then we're just sitting there waiting for the world to change, but yeah. nothing changes if nothing changes. And so it's in that pain where we learn new ways of living and unlearning old behaviors to allow the new life to come into our lives. Beautiful. And then the, you talked about the patience and you talked about the faith and you talk about the surrender. Uh, so is that you, you are leading some mastery and you mastery sessions and you have this mastery school. How, how do you actually help people make these radical changes, uh, tennis, uh, with them, for them, by them? Uh, how do you lead these mastery sessions? How do they unfold? Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it's a huge question. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's a little different and I approach yeah. things a little differently. Right. Uh, the, the, and recently I've shifted a lot of the way that I do things because mm -hmm. I've, uh, over the last year or two, mm -hmm. I've dove, dove very deeply into our emotional childhood wounds. Wow. And I used to be very focused on focus, right? Like a, a big problem with, the, especially with the world today, everybody's like, oh, that poor kid has ADD, but mm. we all have ADD, mm. you know, we're all easily distracted. And there's yeah. so much with our technology, our iPhones, social media, the politics, the news, Ooh. and what people think about us and all those things that we don't stay focused on what it is we're doing. We're always doing multiple things at the same time. Mm. That being said, uh, that was like, that was the focus of most of my coaching. So it was unfolding. Why do we do that? Being honest and open and mm. willing to uh, change the way that you're living. But that being said, the reason we behave that way is because of our wounds. And these wounds are, they're very, uh, we, we've all heard of these before, but abandonment, betrayal, rejection, humiliation, injustice. And these are all wounds that all of us have suffered. Every single one of us, there's 8 billion people now, whatever, or however many, and uh, we've all suffered these wounds on some level. And once we do, and it, it, the truth is, unless there's a really huge traumatic experience, it's not super important about where the wounds came from. It's just that they're there. And how am I coping with those? And they came likely from a very early age from zero to like three. And 
maybe you were crying one day and you wanted your mom to pick you up when you were like six months old, but she was busy and couldn't grab you. So now you suffered this wound of abandonment or rejection or betrayal. And we learn ways of coping, which are survival mechanisms. And we carry those into our adult years. Mm -hmm. And what we have to realize is that we don't need to behave that way anymore. We don't, there's nothing to protect ourselves from. We're adults now. We don't need to act like that two-year-old, three-year-old, five-year-old child who was scared and wasn't safe. You right. are safe. Mm -hmm. So when we start unfolding these things, life just, I, it really, I've never been more, uh, I don't want to say enlightened or awakened than when I was going through this work myself. And I see it going on with my clients all the time where they just realize that they have infinite power within themselves and that they're free and that they're safe to go and do whatever it is you want to do. That is powerful. Uh, I did say we, we do have a lot in common. Uh, so I uh, I work a lot with the inner child healing uh, yeah. because, same thing. <laughs> same thing. Be and, and of course, my tutor, my mentor was Phyllis Crystal. And would you believe, Dennis, she was 100 years old when she came wow. to India and taught about 30 of us. And we've now become her legacy because she uh, crossed over to the other realm um, at 102. Um, so I think it's so important. And thank you so much, Dennis, for bringing that forward to our audience that, uh, you know, they, they, there is healing to be done if you feel injured and wounded. But like you said, on the other hand, we're adults and we can handle this. Uh, but perhaps um, just a little awareness, don't you think, Dennis, a uh, little awareness that if there is healing to be done, then it needs to be done. Because if we are repetitively thinking, then we get shaped by our thoughts. And of course, we become what we think, right? So yeah, we should do. We, are you saying that we should really allow the healing to happen? Or are you saying there is no healing to be done? What's your interpretation on that? Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I mean, like, in my experience, uh, yeah, you want the healing to happen, but I think it's in conjunction with, mm -hmm. uh, with work, uh, right? doing it. And work doesn't have to mean struggle or pain. Mm -hmm. I it see what means, you mean. Mm. Yeah, it just means working on it. Um, you know, it's the same thing, like when you were talking about our thoughts create our reality. And the law of attraction and the way the law of attraction was presented in that yeah. book, The Secret, all those years ago, she left out very important parts of it all. You know, mm -hmm. it's like our thoughts do create our reality. Yeah, We want to manifest uh, uh, whatever it is that we're, we're going after, but we want to feel it too and live that way. And that's an important piece of the puzzle. Like we can't just say, well, I want to make, I, I'm envisioning six figure checks coming in the mail and i'm just gonna sit here and get stoned and play xbox and hang out <laughs> and then i wonder why life doesn't unfold yeah. that way yeah it's because there needs it needs to be all combined with action and again action doesn't have to mean struggle mm. you know, we want to be able to trust in the processes as a businessman and you're a businesswoman mm. is like we want to set the goal but we don't focus on the goal. We focus on the systems and processes mm -hmm. to get us there. And then the goal gets accomplished. And it's the mm -hmm. same thing with unfolding our lives mm -hmm. is that we create goals and plans and dreams and wishes. In fact, I have my clients do a business plan that we call a dream plan, a vision plan. And we write down, what are, what's my mission statement? Right. What do I hope to achieve? What are my strengths yeah. and weaknesses and yeah. threats? How am I going to get there? What are my resources? And when you clearly define what your goals are, then you start working on the systems yeah. and processes, and then you eventually get there. The vision board, uh, rightfully said, Dennis, uh, is so powerful. Uh, you know, my, uh, my, uh, my work, I call my company the circle of joy. And uh, would you believe my first client was called Joy from Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when we started working, I used the Holstein Manifesto quite a fair bit and uh, the vision board. And she actually stuck. Uh, so she came from, um, uh, you know, she lived in an area where she didn't want her children growing. And uh, she envisioned a house uh, not over the top, uh, you know, 
huge house, but a, a cute house in a different area that was safe for the children. Would you believe that uh, what you said is so apt that in three weeks, she was actually driving and she saw a house, which was almost what she had imagined. Uh, and they got a loan and they managed that. So I think, uh, Dennis, isn't it beautiful when hope is light, right? Uh, hope is also bravery, right? Uh, what is it, Dennis? We're in this beautiful forum and I'm feeling the energy and, uh, and I'm feeling that this uh, interview is going to land on the ears that needs to hear it. I can feel it. What message would you like to give from your heart to our global audience today, Dennis? Yeah, I mean, hope is such a beautiful uh, word. Uh, I just want people to know that, you know, whatever we're going through, it's we're going through for a reason. One of my favorite speakers, because I, I was a speaker for a long time before the world shut down, I used to do a lot of speaking. Mm. And um, uh, one of the things that I would talk about is that there is always hope. Mm. And uh, when one of my favorite speakers is uh, Joel Osteen, and he's a, a Christian speaker, really popular guy. I'm not a Christian, but I love good speakers. Mm. And what he said was, and he said it very profoundly, better than I do, but he's like, when you're going through pain, mm. uh, it's there for a reason. Yeah. It's there yeah. to motivate you, to prepare you, to improve you. Don't waste your pain. That pain oh. propels us into uh, growth. It, it allows for answers uh, and solutions to come in that otherwise would might not have made it. Um, and we don't always go through those levels of pain, thank God, uh, because those uh, the, the, the heartache, the pain, yes. the, the suffering that we go through as humans uh, can be overwhelming sometimes. And luckily we don't go through it too often, but we do go through it. And when it's there, it's there for a reason. So uh, I think a lot of the reason for a lot of the troubles, the pains, the addictions, the, uh, uh, the reason people struggle is because they don't get, they get to the pain, right? but they don't get through the pain to the other side. They um, don't feel it all the way through. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, it's like, if you envision pain, you know, as coming in one ear, it needs to come out the other side. And yeah, otherwise yeah. it stays stuck in there and it spins around and it makes us sick and unhappy and unhealthy yes. and causes a myriad of other types of problems. So we want to be able to feel and process all of our feelings, all of the pain, sorrow, mm -hmm. and process all the happiness too. process everything yes. you're going through, feel mm -hmm. all of it and live in, in the present moment, good, bad, or indifferent propels mm -hmm. us to the next moment with hope and love and kindness and joy. Mm -hmm. Uh, all, it, it is life is beautiful Dennis if we allow it to be and you know you you are also a medi meditation uh, you lead meditations and mindfulness and you know we've we we as practitioners know that the most beautiful simple meditation is when you actually feel every cell of your body and you connect with the body that's you know lying on a mattress you feel that contact and you allow to feel the pain, the aches, the joints, everything. And uh, it's always easier to go through than against. Uh, so thank you for that beautiful message, Dennis. Uh, I think that's a lot of takeaway. Um, you know, I hope our audience out there knows that joy is like a shadow that never leaves. And, uh, you know, we can hold on to hope and joy whenever we want, it follows us. Uh, so after that intense session, Dennis, it's time to get into a lighter mood. And I always finish my sessions with a rapid fire round. You are the driver. So just beautiful, light, quirky, spontaneous answers. So if you are ready, should we go and should I shoot a few rapid fire questions? Yeah. And I just, before we start, which yes. of course, that's awesome. I, I, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. But before we start, I love what you said. And I want to add to what I said, because I just thought about it for a second. But yeah. I love yeah. how you said, we want to have fun. 
and live lightly. You know, I heard a great expression years ago. We ultimately, we want to wear the world as a loose garment. Mm. You know, let things be as they are. Yeah. Let, people, yeah. let angry people be angry. Let happy people <laughs> be happy. Let all the bad people do the bad things and you good people do. The, like, just let, if we can allow the life uh, to flow through us and the energy to flow through us rather than fight against it and just live lightly and enjoy the ride. I say that a lot in like my posts on social media and stuff. Yeah. It's always but enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride and let it be and just be not doing, uh, you know, rather than human being, we become human doing. Uh, and I think just to be a human being again and feel the humanness, I, I think there's such joy. When someone asks me what my value is, I always say surrender, faith, uh, just allowing it. So thank you, Dennis, for uh, adding that. I love that, wearing life like a garb, like a loose garb. I love that. All right. So, Dennis, um, let's see what, what segment of you emerges after the rapid fire so if you're ready, should we go with the first one, Dennis? Let's go. Okay. All right. You're on. So what do you typically do when you're bored? Uh, I like to go to the beach or go swimming. Okay. Lovely. Absolutely. The water, one of the beautiful elements. What are the most likely two words someone would use to describe you in your eyes, your perception? Uh, uh, happy and fun. Funky, right? <laughs> oh, and funky, yeah, but more fun. I, I think I'm fun and I'm generally a happy person. And uh, yeah. I'm not as funky as I used to be, but I can get a little funky every now and then. <laughs> Did you realize, which I just realized, Dennis, funky, F-U-N, and just add a K-Y, there you go. <laughs> fun, I love it. <laughs> funky. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how funny do you think you are, one being the lowest? <laughs> Uh, funny funny I mean yeah oh, do you yeah. have a good sense of humor One yeah I believe I have a pretty good sense of humor it could be dry at times but I think I'm pretty funny I think most people find that okay kind of funny. Yeah. and what do you perceive yourself on a scale of one to ten uh, I would say an eight sorry to put you in that spot but yeah it's always good to evaluate <laughs> on a you know open forum like this uh, thank you for being honest. Uh, so what's the one thing that never fails to bring a smile to your lips, Dennis? Uh, really, it's the beach and good oh. food. I like both. I like the beach and good food. Wonderful. Uh, I was a chef for many years. And so oh, I, I appreciate what goes into really. Uh, yeah. Food. Yeah. yeah. In, in India, we sincerely believe um, you know, I try to make this a cross-culture uh, interview because, you know, it, the title of this is Choosing Joy, Stories and Secrets from Around the World. And in India, we sincerely believe that the way to a guy's heart is through the stomach. Uh, maybe that's why a lot of guys have big bellies, but that's another conversation. Uh, uh, what would you do, Dennis, if you only had 24 hours to live? Uh, wow. Well, I would say goodbye to the people I love. I'm sorry. I, and that wasn't supposed to be morose, but you know, when I was taking down questions, they always pop up. So thank you for bearing with that. But yes, uh, just live like you've never lived before. Right. So thank you, Dennis. That's really the end of the rapid fire. How does that feel? Oh, it was fine. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, you've asked a lot of challenging questions this whole podcast, and I enjoy that. I think it's great to uh, challenge the guests and the viewers, too. And, uh, you know, we all learn along the way. When we stop learning, we, we kind of die a little inside because there's so much. We know, we know very little compared to what there is to know. Yeah, and so yeah. uh, when we're forced into new ways of living and thinking and feeling, then uh, then we grow a little. So I, th I thank you for the challenging uh, questions. Thank you, Dennis. And before we say bye to our wonderful supportive audience, where can they find you to connect with you? The very best way is on my website, DennisBerry.com. From there, you could buy the book, listen to the podcast. You mm -hmm. can book a free session with me and we can see you talk about whatever it is you'd like to talk about addiction recovery or whatever 
And um, also I'm uh, pretty active on LinkedIn and uh, please reach out. Always happy to talk. I love talking with new people. Lovely, Dennis. I'm so glad we reached out to each other. So I close this episode with a wish for all who are listening. And that is that the truth truth is that you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. Life is such a crazy ride and nothing is guaranteed. And that was not mine. That's from Eminem. Uh, wish you loads of hope. Wish you loads of joy, loads of love. Join me, Dennis, to say bye to our global audience. Love you all. And I will also see you on the 15th June in the 20th episode. So bye for now. Bye, everybody.